Hey, what is up everybody? In this video, we'll have a look at activities from our chapter Chemical Reactions and Equations. Because in this board examination, most of the questions will be coming from the activity part and that do you know boxes part, right? So that is why it is important to study them and as well as they are interesting, right? So now, without any further ado, let's begin. Better. Okay, so in activity 1.1, we have a magnesium, right? Magnesium is a metal and we have a ribbon of it, okay? Now, before moving ahead, the first thing that we have to do is that we have to clean it with a sandpaper. Now the question is that why we have to clean it with sandpaper, right? So the thing is that magnesium reacts with oxygen from the atmosphere and it forms a layer, a protective layer and this layer is unreactive and it prevents magnesium from burning, right? So that is why we have to clean magnesium ribbon from sandpaper, right? So this is the first thing. Now moving ahead, this activity asks us to burn magnesium ribbon and we can also call it as combustion of magnesium, right? So any reaction we will see in this video, we will see two things, right? The first is the observation and then the chemical equation of that reaction, okay? So in this activity, what is the observation that we're gonna make? So first thing that we have to do, take magnesium ribbon, clean it with sandpaper and then burn it. So what is the observation? Yes, magnesium ribbon burns with a white dazzling flame, right? Dazzling means bright, right? So magnesium ribbon burns with a dazzling white flame. This is our first observation. And the other one is that this magnesium ribbon converts into a white powder, right? So this is our second observation. So now let's try to write the chemical equation of this reaction. So we have magnesium and it reacts with, or we are actually burning it. And when we are actually burning it, oxygen is required, right? So we're gonna write here O2, right? And then it gives us MgO or magnesium oxide. So this is a chemical equation. And the white powder that we got, yes, that is nothing but magnesium oxide, right? So this was our observation and the chemical equation. And as we can see here, that this is a combination reaction, right? Magnesium and oxygen are combining to give us the product. Yes, magnesium oxide, right? So that is why it is a combination reaction. Okay, now in activity 1.2, we have potassium iodide and lead nitrate solution, right? And now we're gonna mix both of them. Now, what is the observation? So observation number one, there is a formation of yellow precipitate, okay? Yellow is clear, but what is precipitate? Well, that's easy. A precipitate is nothing but a solid which is insoluble in water. Insoluble, it means that if you try to mix it in water, it will not get mixed, right? So that means it is insoluble in water. So that is precipitate, right? So that is the only observation in this activity. Now let's try to write the chemical equation of this activity. So we have lead nitrate. Now let's try to make the formula of lead nitrate. So the valency of lead is plus two and nitrate is minus one. Cross multiplying it, we get PbNO3 whole twice, right? Is that correct? Yes. It is, right? So we have lead nitrate and then potassium iodide. K has plus one, I has minus one. Cross multiplying it, we get Ki. Yes, that's correct. So now let's move ahead and write the chemical equation. So we have PbNO3 whole twice plus Ki. And that will give us PbI2 plus KNO3. And here, as you can see, it has a double displacement reaction right there is an exchange of ions so that is why it is double displacement reaction and one more thing that the yellow precipitate that we saw that was nothing but lead iodide so if you want to remember it so you can remember that the color of lead is always yellow right so where wherever you see lead it's gonna be yellow 
Okay, so this was the double displacement reaction and since there is a formation of precipitate, so we can also call it as precipitation reaction, right? And now we're going to move ahead to activity 1.3. Okay, so what we have here? So in this activity, we have zinc granules, right? Zinc granules. And now we have to mix it with any acid like HCl or H2SO4. So what we have to do? Take HCl, take zinc granules and put them together in the same conical flask. And we have to see that what happens next. Okay, so what's going to happen? One thing we, have, we can observe, right? So observation number one is that there is a formation of some gas. Right now we don't know which gas it is, but there is a formation of some gas. One more thing, is there any change of temperature? So we can check it with thermometer, right? And what we found? Yes, the temperature has increased, right? Temperature has increased, it means heat is released. And heat is released, it means, yes, it is an exothermic reaction, right? That's right. So this is an exothermic reaction. Now, we have to find out that which gas it is. It is not given in our activity, but I'm going to tell you. So let's take this gas and pass it in a soap solution. And after that, there are going to be bubble formation. And now what we can do, take a lighter and bring that near the bubbles and try to burn the bubbles. And what we get? Pop sound. And from this, what we can say? Can you tell me which gas it is? Yes, yes, it is nothing but hydrogen, right? Because hydrogen gas burns with a pop sound, right? So what are observation? Temperature has increased and there is a formation of hydrogen gas. Now, uh, let's try to write the chemical equation of this reaction. So we had zinc granules and with you can take HCl or H2SO4. Let me take H2SO4. So we have zinc plus H2SO4, which gives us zinc sulfate, ZnSO4, plus hydrogen gas, H2, right? So this was our chemical equation. And one more thing that we can see here is that zinc is actually displacing hydrogen, right? Zinc is taking the place of hydrogen. So that is why we can also call it, yes, tell me the answer. Yes, single displacement reaction, right? So this is single displacement reaction as well as it is exothermic reaction. So this was about activity 1.3. Okay, so now here we have activity 1.4 and in this activity we have to take calcium oxide and this is also called as quick lime, right? Quick lime, okay? And you must know this that this quick lime is also used in cement industry, right? So you have to keep that in mind. Okay, so we have CaO, calcium oxide or quicklime and what we have to do, put that in beaker and add water into that beaker and now what's going to happen? So let's try to write the observations. Observation number one, it's reacting. It's reacting vigorously and one more thing, large amount of heat is getting released, right? So I'm going to give you an idea that how to write the answer in the examination so you can write that Calcium oxide or quick lime reacts vigorously with water to produce slake lime. I'll come to that, releasing a large amount of heat. Okay, so this is how you can probably answer your questions. Now, let's try to write the chemical equation of this reaction. So we have CaO quick lime plus water that gives us CaOH whole twice. And this is also called as slaked lime. And don't forget to add heat over there. Okay, so this was our chemical equation for this reaction and this is pretty popular and you should know like this is one of the main questions that may come in our examination. Okay, so now after this we have a do you know box. So do you know what? So, so we got slake lime from this reaction. Now this slake lime is used for whitewashing the walls, right? Whitewashing the walls. So, slake lime is, for, is used for that purpose, right? Now, after whitewashing the walls, the shine actually comes after a few days. Now, why does that happen? Because that calcium hydroxide, CaOH whole twice, reacts with 
carbon dioxide and that gives the shining to the walls okay now let's try to write the equation for this reaction so we have caoh whole twice or slake line that we got from our activity 1.4 and now it is getting react with carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and this gonna give shine so what we have in the product side yes we have calcium carbonate plus water and this calcium carbonate gives shining to the walls okay okay so now from this equation or reaction we got calcium carbonate now we're gonna talk about calcium carbonate so let me tell you that if you see marbles if you see chalk or if you see eggshells all the things are comprised of calcium carbonate so if you see anywhere that write the reaction of eggshells with hcl so when there is eggshell you actually have to take calcium carbonate okay so marbles and eggshells and chalk powder all have calcium carbonate in it okay now what we're gonna do we're gonna take calcium carbonate and we're gonna heat it okay there's a difference between burning and heating okay so now we're gonna heat it and now what we will get is that it decomposes into CaO or calcium oxide and CO2 carbon dioxide okay so now can you see a cycle here okay so we started with calcium oxide quick line we added it into water we got slake line now we took that slake line the it got reacted with carbon dioxide we got calcium carbonate and now after heating calcium carbonate we again got CaO or quick line right so here we have this cycle okay so let me summarize this whole cycle so we took CaO added that into water we got slake line after it got reacted with CO2 we got calcium carbonate and after heating it we again get CaO so this was the whole or the complete cycle right interesting isn't it okay so now we are at last activity for this video activity 1.5 so in this activity we have ferrous sulfate crystals with us okay so first of all what is the color of ferrous sulfate yes it is green now before moving ahead i would like to tell you that iron has two valencies i mean this this for two valencies now when it is plus two we call it ferrous and when it is plus three we call it ferric and now for this activity we have taken ferrous sulfate it means the valency is plus two so let's try to write the formula so we have ferrous it means plus two and then sulfate minus two cross multiplying it we get feso4 right so this activity asks us to heat the ferrous sulfate crystals now observation number one we see condensed water vapor in our test tube right so condensed water water vapor in our test tube this is our first observation next the green color of ferrous sulfate changes into reddish brown color right reddish brown color and one more that there is a smell of burning sulfur yes the smell that we get on diwali after burning lot of firecrackers right so we're gonna get the smell of burning sulfur okay so these are the three observation from this activity and now let's try to write the chemical equation okay so we have ferrous sulfate now as you must be knowing that ferrous sulfate has seven water of crystallization right so one every one molecule of ferrous sulfate has seven molecule of water right so we have feso4 dot 7 h2o now when we heat it what happens is that these water molecules get detached so we will get feso4 plus 7 h2o and that is the reason that why we saw condensed water vapor in our test tube right because these water vapor get detached from ferrous sulfate now for the heating it we have feso4 and when we further heat it we get ferric oxide plus sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide okay now now the first thing on the product side we have ferric oxide now i have said ferric it means the valency of iron is 
plus 3 right initially we took ferrous and now we got ferric oxide right so you have to keep note of it okay now as we have seen that green color of ferrous sulfate changes into reddish brown color this reddish brown substance is nothing but this ferric oxide okay and now the next observation we saw the smell of burning sulfur right so we got that smell because of SO2 sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide SO3 right so these were the reason for all the observation that we have seen from this activity right so I hope that this is very very clear to all of you all right so that's it for this video guys I hope that all of you liked it if you really did then don't forget to hit the subscribe button for such more informative videos and I'll cover rest of the activities in our next video, right? So thank you very much for watching.